Good evening, Madam. Okay. Mary Odom. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to this session uh, with me, Fred Kwajo Azori. Uh, this session is to allow me to get to understand uh, the internet governance processes and also to help anyone who gets access to this recording to be able to understand the internet governance processes and why the need for the internet governance forum and also to uh, shed more light on the multi-stakeholder approach of the internet governance. So okay. you're welcome, Madam Mary. Can you briefly introduce yourself for me? My name is Mary Uduma. Um, I am the, currently the coordinator of uh, West Africa Internet Governance Forum and also the chair of uh, Africa Internet Governance Forum, MAG. So the, the, I, I, I promoted the Nigeria Internet Governance Forum and I belong to the global. I was one time a, a member of the multi-stakeholder uh, advisory group of the UN Internet Governance Forum. Uh, advising the UN Secretary General. So that's. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Mary. I think you have a very high profile, and I'm privileged to uh, be on this call today with you. And um, I participate. Me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, please. I can hear you. I said I participated in the two uh, phases of WISIS. WISIS means. Uh, is uh, World Summit is on the World Summit on Internet uh, uh, Society. Okay, so I particip participated in the two phases of it, 2020, 20, 2003 and 2005, and it was at the 2005 meeting of, of the WISIS that um, uh, gave birth to an uh, Internet Governance Forum, so that we have. A, a platform where uh, um, actors and uh, stakeholders in the internet ecosystem, since internet is loosely managed, will come together and discuss public policy issues that affect the internet. So it started in 2000 and 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 uh, to define the 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 actors in the internet governance ecosystem, okay? okay? First is that, as I told you, that internet governance started from the second phase of WISIS 2005, hosted in Africa, precisely in Tunis. That was where stakeholders in the, in the internet ecosystem came together, countries, or uh, most countries in the world, and we agreed that um, uh, we established a platform where uh, discussions on equal footing, whether you are government or non-governmental organization, equal footing to come together, discuss the public policy issues affecting the internet. Because the internet is, uh, although it started in the UN, but um, it, it was discovered that uh, there are so many other actors that are part of uh, uh, the management or, uh, or, and there are so many norms that will govern the internet. So that was when internet governance, the whole world has been at the beginning of 2005 that will establish this platform. That is that is internet governance. Um, I'm very sorry. Let me put on my. As as I said, internet governance is a process. It's not a meeting or something that starts and stops. It's a process. Why is it a process? Because it's still developing. It's evolving every day. Today, what we had as the original internet, what what started as an internet has grown to uh, to something that the 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 original um, originators of the internet they did not expect that it will explode as much as this and it has become our everyday life so so 
And there are so many actors that are involved. We have the government as actors, those that develop policies, regulations. We have the technical people that develop the technical standard. Okay, technical uh, 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 technical systems. They are the ones, those that do research. And you remember, the internet started as a research. And um, so it was uh, undergrad, uh, uh, graduate students that started internet, uh, started uh, research on internet. And it was the military, the US military, they, they needed a, a, an, a bypass of communication because the only thing that was available was telecoms, it was a uh, telephone. So they wanted a secure and um, a bypass where they can communicate without having to go through. Because those days, when you want to make a call, uh, a plug is uh, plugged to the from your own channel to the channel of the person you are to speak to. So the military, they, they were the people that started the internet, where computer would talk to computer and started the uh, the the uh, protocols. So for, for internet to work, there's a process it takes. It takes the IP, IP address, the internet protocol address, and then it went on to develop the domain name. It went on to develop the domain name. So all the people that are involved, since there was nobody that would say, look, I am there to control, like they were controlling the telephone. So there were many actors and countries were Claiming that uh, their, their, their revenue from telephone was going down because you can from Ghana communicate to anybody in the US without going to your Ghana telecom uh, company or Nigerian telecom company. So there were so many people that didn't understand why internet should be, why it should be a, a bypass. So that the WIS is held 2023 and 2025. And at the end of it, the Internet Governance Fund was agreed upon as a platform for all stakeholders and all actors in their respective role will come together and develop norms, develop principles, develop understanding standards on how to, uh, to work, to make this internet stable, make it open, make it secured, right? So this, this, this is where the process started. And the process, as I told you, is still evolving. Right at the time, and by 2003, is no more the internet we have today. We are talking about digitalization, digital, uh, digital, digital, online, everything. And you can see that we are speaking now. We are speaking. Um, I'm in Nigeria, and you are in Ghana. We are talking, and yet we are not going through the the PSTN. That's the telephone uh, uh, line. Yes. So we can speak. So the package switch that make makes my when I speak is 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 put in in package and is sent through the protocol and it gets to your own side is uh, unpackaged and you understand what I'm saying. So the thing it has gone through evolution. So it is still some are still building. The human rights people are still looking for uh, where is the internet? Where the human rights is in uh, human rights issues are are, are are taken care of in internet. Those technical people are still building. The, the, the government is also still grappling with the fact they can't understand the multi stakeholder. Government, what they know is uh, multilateral. Uh, do you know what is multilateral process? That is. Yes, please. Okay, so that's the, what government understand. So this multi stakeholder is, uh, is not. Um, um, is not uh, is not, they don't understand it. So they are still, we are still in the process. So it's still a process. We have not gotten to the end. We're still discussing. And each day new things happen. Look at what happened during the, since the pa pandemic. People, you know, everything went online. We are doing everything in line, whether business, education, social, everything is now online. So it's evolving, it's building, it's in progress. So new, each year, we find a new thing to discuss at the Internet Governance Forum. That's why we call it a process. So it's not a meeting that is final. It's a process. New things come up, and we discuss those new things in the Internet Governance. Okay? So 
internet now, there are actors that make the internet work, right? There are those that are done by ISOC. ISOC, they call it Internet Tax Force, uh, Internet uh, IETF. Uh, internet, internet Engineering Tax Force. Engineering Tax Force, those ones that set standards. There's AIB that also set, set standards. Standard uh, uh, IETF, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the tax one. AIB, I think Internet uh, architecture it's board. Is it the board. icon? Board. That of icon. No, I'm coming to icon. Okay. I'm still, I'm talking about Internet Society. There are two, two, two sub organizations that are involved. The, okay. uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tax force as well as the uh, architectural board. So they set standards. They step, they they develop the protocols. So. They are there, they are still building each day. They build a new thing and they are still uh, doing work on that. So they play their own role to make sure that the IP addresses the, the work, the internet protocols, they work. All right. So, and uh, there's ICANN that develop policies around the, around the domain name. You know about domain name. The GH is a domain name. We have the top level domain name. We have the, the, the second level domain name, and we even have up to the third level domain name. So those that manage the domain name, they are in the I can develop policies around the domain name. Then you, do you know about Afrinic? Have you heard about Afrinic? Yes, please. Uh, okay, Afrinic. Those are the ones that manage, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the IP addresses are in, in big block slash eight. So they, 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 they manage that that aspect of the internet because the IP can, uh, the internet cannot work without the IP because it's only when you type the IP address of uh, any uh, uh, any domain name, you can reach the website of the, 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 the people that you have typed their domain name. So those are, they are the, they are also root server security uh, association. Uh, there is also, uh, the numbering, okay, uh, as I said, I can then there's IANA, IANA, which is now called the PTI. Uh, okay, so they manage the protocol. So, and then you come down to those that are developing uh, the human rights aspect, those that are saying, look, whatever you are developing, put us into consideration. Don't make sure that we are not, our rights are not violated. So the UN has they already agreed that whatever is the right, the, the right offline should be the same thing as right online. So they are there. Then there is the international organizations like the United Nations, like the uh, OCED, and uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in West Africa, we talk about the uh, ECOWAS. They are also developing some policies. They are developing e uh, police, uh, public policy. They are also coming up with uh, norms and regulations and uh, uh, policies that will govern our region. So in your country, you have the regulator, the telecom regulator, right? You call it NTA, uh, NITA, the right? NCA, the National Communications Authority. Yeah. And there is, there is the development agency as well. Okay. The, G, uh, the National... Uh, a, 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 IT development agency. I think you have something like that as well. So you have the business people that are making money out of uh, the internet. So they too, they, they want their own issues to be tabled at the at, at the forum, so that they would also know that they are they, 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 nobody is blocking their businesses. So so that is how all actors. There are so many actors in the internet ecosystem. So the, the process, the internet governance process is that each of the actors in their own role will be able to have a, a, have a shared common understanding and rules and norms that govern the internet. So if you go to the WISIS uh, uh, agenda, you will see uh, section, the, the, the 20, 2005, uh, uh, this is uh, 
the outcome of this is 2005. You will see the, the, what the whole world has been on. If you look at session 72, session 83, I, saw, I suppose that's where he talked about what the internet governance is and who and who should take part in internet governance. And the thing is that multi-stakeholderism means that each of the actors are of equal footing. In multilateral, when government is taking decision, they don't put the business people to come and sit on the table with them. They don't bring the human rights people to come and sit on the table with them to decide. In Ghana, the parliament in Ghana, when they're making, they can call for, for input to, but when it comes to final decision, so the, the process, the multi-stakeholder is that we come together at equal footing. It's not that government is higher than uh, civil society, and the government is higher than business, government is higher than the technical community, government is higher than the, uh, the, the academic community. No, equal footing means everybody has a stake. Everybody, all, everybody can, can contribute to debate and bring out policies that will make sure that the internet is open, is accessible, and I mean by open is accessible as well, is that is secure, is secure, is stable. And the next one we're talking about is affordable. So accessibility, affordability, and availability of and ability. So that's what we come to discuss. So that's why it's all a process. It's not, it, it has not ended. We'll, each day we continue to see new ones. We're talking about digital cooperation now. We're not talking about internet governance any longer. So digital policy, what are the digital policies in Ghana? Which ones, what are the latest digital policies in Ghana? Do you know any of them? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. So. One of the digital policies that has been brought out, uh, it's tax. It's actually with regards to taxation. That's the uh, e-levy that has been brought recently, and it was it was announced to the 2021 by uh, 2022 budget for the country, uh, and this has actually sparked a lot of agitations and uh, debates on the issue. Exactly. So when we wait. When we were discussing in 2003 and 2005, we didn't know that we would get to this stage of living, right? Digital way. So it, it, it's no more internet, just the internet, but it affects everyday life, every day of whatever we do in life today. So for that reason, anything that touches the digital, digital online process, everybody is affected. You can see what it has passed. Okay? discussions, education, everywhere saying no, we are making it too, too expensive for us. We young, we young people will not be able to access the internet because the providers of internet will jack up the price. That's what will happen. So, so those are things that they will not, they will not say initially. So that's why it's a process. So each new thing, emerging, emerging issues will come and emerging technologies are coming. The Internet of Things, the, A, uh, the AIs, and the, all the, those ones that are coming, the robotics, all of them are new things that are coming out of the basic Internet research. So it's a process. So, and they are actors. They are policy, uh, policy initiators and policy, uh, policy uh, uh, what we call implementers. There are, there are those that will provide the policy and all that can implement. So all those policies that are being that are affecting me and you is on daily basis is public policy. And so as I said, the actors should should uh, come together at an equal footing approach, not one loading it over the other, not national and they loading it over me, not national assembly loading, I mean their own national assembly. Or your parliament loading it over the business people. So there should be cooperation and understanding, and each person will bring his own perspective. And uh, we discuss and uh, agree on norms, we agree on rules, we agree on principles, we agree on what and what we should do and what we should do when it comes to internet. And the 
remember the four things I told you in, in uh, the discussion is all about. What are they? That the internet should do what? The internet should be open, uh, globally accessible, should be yes. secured. So this should be secured. Yes, it should be stable as yes. well. Okay. And it should be, now we are talking about affordability. Now, because of what, you know, this taxation will make it not affordable to, not everybody will have afford it, okay? Yes. And it should be available at all times. Okay. Nobody should shut down the internet. Okay, what is it that I've not answered you? I think uh, uh, if you, you've actually uh, given me a broad perspective and uh, taken a lot of the questions that I would have asked like, uh, and answered them already. Uh, so I would right. want to find out uh, what, what are some of the challenges that we, uh, we face in terms of uh, the internet governance in our region, like the African region, and what okay. are some of the challenges like preventing? Uh, first of, okay, first of all, you see, in our region, Africa, you know, the government is the mover and shaker of uh, businesses. Most businesses, unlike other jurisdictions, where the business people are the ones that dictate the pace, is the government. Government in my own, city, in my own uh, country, in particular, government is the largest spender. You know, everybody waits for budget, for the government budget. I don't know whether it's like that in Ghana. So at the budget. So government is the largest spender. And so government has high gra uh, graphs or whole, high hold or has a hold on business, on, on economic activity in our region in Africa. So whatever we do, if we don't carry the government along, then we, we, are, we are still not there. So our government do not yet understand multi-stakeholderism. What they know is going to uh, uh, ITU, okay, or ECOWAS, you know, where a treaty are made. At internet governance, there's no a treaty. We discuss, debate, and come with recommendation, which yeah. each stakeholder will take home to go and implement as a policy. We discuss policy issues at internet governance. But in ITU, they are looking at treaty. We entered into treaty. The government of Ghana entered into treaty with government of uh, US and government of this one treaty. And those are the ones our, our people in our region, they know. That's government side. Secondly, the businesses don't understand the business of internet yet. Yes, the young people are coming up with ideas of how to make money from internet and how to develop yourself from internet. But those that do policy, they don't yet understand it. Look at it. Why do, do they come up with taxation? Because they don't understand. They believe that they are being eroded, taxes are being, uh, are being uh, 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 no, evaded because we use the online businesses or we do the online transaction. Now, ATMs, any online transaction you do in my country, government takes money from you. So they are making trillions of, of uh, Naira from that. So that one, they don't understand the multi-stakeholderism. They understand they are the policy makers. They will tell you what to do. And our business people are not there doing business, taking business up. Can you imagine that uh, Donald Trump was bad from using the, the Facebook or Twitter? Can it happen? Can it happen in our, in our soil? Is it possible? in Africa. No, they will challenge it. Is, they will challenge it. Because the businesses, they now have, they now have, you know, authority. They have grit. They, they now dictate, they now develop their own policies on what you should do. Whether you are government or not, this is our policy. If you violate it, look, we yank you out of our policy, of our, of our, of our network. But in government, it's government that is supposed to yank you in our country, in our region, this government will say, I yank you up, I'll stop you from doing this business. You get it? The second thing, now that, that is one, one of the things that we have problem in internet governance. Our government don't yet understand what is internet governance and the multi-stakeholder approach in internet governance. That is everybody having equal uh, 
uh, are a for when it comes to discussing the internet governance. And uh, they still believe that government is, is higher than any other person. I, I can understand that because even if we recommend policy, policy issues or human rights uh, uh, policy, who is to implement it? Is it not government? Government is to implement those, those human rights issues. Okay. So again, the other thing is, is that we have we, we don't have technology. We import this technology. We are not developing indigenous technology, do we? Is there any that is happening in Ghana? Hello, Fred. I'm again with you. I said, we then develop the technology. We import all the technology when it comes to internet. internet. So in governing, the standards are set outside our jurisdiction. The internet governance, the internet, Internet standards are set outside our jurisdiction because we don't produce any, we don't manufacture, so we don't put standards. We don't take our environment into consideration. You can see that if you are, if there are there are machines, that, okay, laptop. If it is not cooling, you know, if the, if the temperature is not cool enough, it will not work. So in developing equipment, our own our own managing the, the technology is, we are not there. So, and that is why the School, School of Internet Governance for Africa is key. So we should be part of it and know that we should be part, we should have our, uh, we should uh, uh, be at the table when policies are being discussed. These days, so many Africans are attending ICANN. Initially, we were very few that were attending ICANN. I can meet him. But these days, we have started attending and we bring up policies that will affect our, our region. So, so these are things that affect our internet government. We are importers, we are consumers, we are not uh, producers of internet services and products. We, we our government don't understand multi-stakeholderism. They, they know multilateralism. Third is that we are not uh, there where the policies are developed, so we should be part of the policy development. We still have uh, infrastructure deficit, deficit, deficit everywhere. Yeah, the, the, we don't have broadband so that we can also connect to the internet and do whatever we want to do in the internet. So I don't know whether I've answered your question, where the problems are. Yes, uh, that's actually answered a lot of it. Um, so, uh, do we have some way forward that you want to recommend? Yeah, uh, way forward. I want you young people to be part of IETF. Eh? Internet Engineering Task Force, where they do, when there's a call for, comment if there is a company that developed a, a new technology and there's a call for comment we will be part of it we should take our own there we should be there where it's being discussed and we should be part of the process okay that's one our government needs to be trained we need training they need to understand what is multi-stakeholder reason so when it comes to the internet governance they need to understand it we need to understand. It. We need to develop our people, businesses around the internet. We should make money from the internet. We, our business people should uh, step up their their game and skill to make money from internet. You see what the the mod, mo, mobile services has brought about, and how the, the uh, 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 those that started the mobile services in our country, what, how they are scooping our our funds and and taking it to their country. And indigenous companies, where are we? We are not there, we, we should stay there. So, and we should participate at all levels when it comes to internet governance, when it comes to ICANN, when it comes to ITF, when it comes to ASU, when it comes to PTI, all right. So we should be part of it. We should develop ourselves. We should be part. We should, be, we should take part. Our voices must be heard. We shouldn't be just yes, sir and all go to make up the number, no. 
we should make our point here. If we are traffic, the, the shutdown, we should stand up against the shutdown. And we should hold our stakeholders accountable to make sure that they, they take their responsibility, each, each of the actors in our region. They, sh they should know their responsibility when it comes to internet governance. If you are human rights, if you are in the government, if you are in the academia, if you are in the technical community, all right? So we should know our responsibility and also be responsible and share this responsibility of how to govern the internet, the principles, the norms, the rules. Okay, so those are the things that we need to go forward. And uh, I like what the African Union is doing, trying to train us in the School of Internet Governance. There are regional ones. There are even Ghana is the, right, running the uh, School of Internet Governance. We should do that. So that we know more. When we know, we'll be able to contribute. What you don't know, you can't give what you don't have. So it's only when you know that you can do it. Okay? Yes, uh, certainly you can give what you don't have. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mary Oduma. Uh, this has been a very great session with you. And uh, I have personally learned a lot of things and with regards to how you've actually break down things for me. Uh, I'm sure anyone who gets access to this recording uh, will be able to understand the processes of internet governance and some of the challenges that we face in the African region. And uh, the way forward that you have proposed to are uh, actually awesome. And I believe if uh, the, the necessary stakeholders and actors are to take this into consideration, it would actually be of help to everyone. Uh, thank you for the time, and I look thank forward you. to having uh, further engagements with you when it becomes necessary. Uh, yes, I hope you. to meet you or to participate with you in the uh, IGF this year. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.